851, turn right, heading 180. 014 Papa, turn right 245, report localizer established 27. Hello everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. For the past year, the Trent 1000 engine name has not only filled my channel personally, but it's also filled the media as you've probably been able to tell. The engine has been plagued by problems and has impacted engine after engine after engine and in turn has resulted in airlines like Air New Zealand calling in High Fly to help cover for its problem by getting them to send a couple of aircraft over. The issues have also resulted in the cancellation of hundreds of flights across multiple airlines, with All Nippon Airways, a Japanese carrier, being the latest victim. However, today I plan to make the problem a little bit clearer and really do explain the Trent 1000 engine issues. Before we properly begin, let's actually outline what the Trent 1000 is. The Trent 1000 is a turbofan engine and powers the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. If you wanted to purchase just one of the engines, including all the support that is associated with it, you'd be spending roughly 41.7 million US. The engine first took flight in early 2006, believe it or not, on a modified 747-200. This is actually similar to what is occurring with the GE9X, the engine which is set to be fitted on to the Boeing 777X series. By 2007, it received joint certification from the EASA and the FAA, a great success indeed for the program. In early 2017, the engine was hit with its first problems, with fatigue cracking of the IPT blades, which were discovered on all Nippon Airways 787 jets. Engines which showed these corrosions were immediately pulled from service. While not a huge setback, Rolls-Royce did have to put 35 million US into repairing this issue. However, this would only be the start of the issues with this engine. The key problem with these engines of late has been the durability of them. This problem is costly and Rolls-Royce have battled it out to attempt to fix the problem with the compressor of the Trent 1000 engines in package C. This is where the breakout of the problem occurred, and if you're wondering why I'm saying package C, that is because the engines placed in package C are the ones impacted by the problem, not those, for example, in package A. To make this a little bit clearer, pretend package C is a batch of off carrots, whereas package A is a batch of ripe carrots. That hopefully can make it a little bit clearer, and it was actually a good way for me to kind of understand what the difference was between the packages. It's probably not the best example, but hopefully you can kind of get what I mean. Why is this such a problem? While any engine problem is of course an issue, obviously after all, engines power planes and have to be performing at the highest standard possible. Any fault could put hundreds of people's lives in danger and that's the last thing that companies like Rolls Royce or even an airline wants to do. Rolls Royce is still trying to fix the engine problems, however at the same time they are undergoing job cuts and huge restructures of their brand. So as they pour millions into trying to fix the problem, they are also trying to cut their expenses through job cuts. Rolls Royce has said that they will spend 450 million US in 2018 alone on trying to fix the problems. However, in 2019, they do expect this number will drop as inspections on the engines cut. Now, when comparing this to the previous issue that we discussed that occurred in 2016 with All Nippon Airways, that was only 35 million US. This is 450 million US, and that's just the expected figure. It could be more, and it probably will be with how it's turned out. That really should just showcase to you the big difference in the problems. Ultimately though, airlines have also been impacted by the engine problems, with well over 100 engines in package C alone, all undergoing these checks, with many being taken out of service, and that means the aircraft too. Months ago, there were actually pictures from New Zealand of Air New Zealand 7879s sitting essentially hopeless outside a hangar, with either their engines covered up or partially detached. Other airlines like Virgin Atlantic were also impacted. However, one could argue they were hit far heavier than Air New Zealand, as the problems occurred when the arrival of the peak summer season was imminent. Virgin Atlantic in turn had to hire in a few A33200s to operate on behalf of the 7879s, and that is the last thing an airline like Virgin Atlantic wanted to do. 
Air New Zealand did in fact originally hire an A330, an A340 with high fly, and operated them to Australian destinations. Of course, this was replacing their 7879. Of course, a whole host of other airlines were also impacted, as I mentioned, with strong rumours linking British Airways to be taking some of Qatar's A330s, again, simply as cover for their stricken 787s. Over the course of the past few months, though, Rolls-Royce gave off mixed signals, stating that the worst was over, then stating that more groundings would be necessary, and then they found the right part to fix the issue. As you can tell, this is pretty mixed and made it difficult for us to really assess how they were tracking the problem, what was actually going to occur. Weeks after they announced this, and on June the 11th, Rolls-Royce announced that the compressor issue was found in different Trent 1000 engines, more specifically in the Package B engines, which entered service in 2012, and consist of a whopping 166 engines. Immediately, this led to the check, which Rolls-Royce said would not impact any carriers. Once again, though, days after this, ANA noted that they would cancel hundreds of flights just because of these checks. However, despite the continued problems, Rolls-Royce is giving it their all to fix this issue, with multiple spokesperson for the company noting that they were using every single available resource to try and right their wrongs and fix the huge problem impacting a number of key airlines. The hard facts which were outlined by Rolls-Royce themselves all the way back in May is that there is more than 380 affected engines and one third of these needed some form of repair work meaning that they need to be taken out of service, or they already have been taken out of service. In fact, in April of this year, the FAA limited ETOPS of Package C engines. This is where the problem originated. Essentially, through the limited ETOPS, airlines like Air Europa, Air New Zealand, British Airways, Avianca, Ethiopian, LATAM, Royal Brunei, Lot Polish, Virgin Atlantic, Scoot, Norwegian Air, and Thai Airways were all limited to fly 60 minutes from a diversion airport capable of handling the aircraft. Now this isn't normal and this is in fact a huge setback for any airline. It means they are very restricted on the routes and the paths they take to their destinations. Essentially they can't be flying 60 minutes away from a diversion airport which is capable of handling them. This isn't the normal time as I mentioned it has been heavily reduced just simply because of the issues which keep being found. So now you may think, this is a pretty complicated situation, and you are quite correct. However, you may also be inclined to think that after the inspections are complete, the airlines are free to go as they were. Well, if you are thinking that, you're not alone, because I did think that originally too. But no, that isn't the case. Even once the problems are cleared, any airline which is operating even a non-faulty engine in package B or package C will have to undergo routine checks, meaning that they will likely be taken out of service far more than originally expected. For example, let's take a look at a typical 7879. It might head into the hangar once every few months or so just to get a routine checkup, and then every so often it will go in for a major service, or it might get its cabin refitted. That's pretty much normal and standard for multiple different aircraft. However, 787s with the Trent 1000s attached will have quite a different life to this. Instead of going once every few months, they'll probably be required once a fortnight, once every three weeks, once a week, even for the affected ones. So you can imagine, let's say a service is going to take five hours, a whole day. If that plane was originally scheduled to make a flight on that particular day, it no longer can. And what does that mean? Well, in turn, it means an airline like Royal Brunei, Virgin Atlantic, Thai Airways, or Scoot will have to put another aircraft in its place. Now, they could either lease in aircraft, which we've seen Virgin Atlantic and Air New Zealand do, or have to use another aircraft. In turn, that means one of their other aircraft isn't available. It's a chain reaction, and it is a huge problem that needs sorting as soon as possible. I've made multiple videos now on the Trent 1000 engine issues, and if any more news arises on this problem, I'll be updating you as soon as possible. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to comment them below, and I'm sure someone will be happy to answer you if I'm not able to. Engines have never really been my area of interest or one that I'm quite knowledgeable on, but over the course of the past seven months, I've been trying to learn more about them, and hopefully through this particular video, you were able to not only learn some 
new things maybe, but potentially better your understanding on the rather complex Trend 1000 engine issues. I'd like to take the time now to thank you very much for watching this video of mine and the constant support you all show me. I am very, very grateful for it. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to drop it a like and of course subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed what you saw. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers and I really can't wait to hit that. I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. And we'll fly